Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you for clicking on this video. This is I Seth Kills, otherwise known as Nick. And I just got done watching episode two of She Hulk. And my first reactions, and by the way, this is going to be a spoiler review, so just be warned. But my reactions last week was very, I would say, mostly negative, especially with all the, the woke stuff and, you know, dialogue. Uh, in the whole episode was this somewhat um, unbearable at times. A lot of times where you rolled your eyes on uh, just what, uh, you know, the character was saying. On this episode, I thought they toned down a lot of the woke stuff. And I thought that uh, you felt, anyways, that the show was going into a direction that was interesting now. Um, you know... I think, you know, obviously the episodes just being 30 minutes long, it's kind of hard to rush everything in into one episode. But I still kind of wish they took their time with the origin story, obviously, and, you know, kind of stuck maybe more true to the comic books with the mob story. But, I mean, with this episode, you can kind of see where it's going. Um, you know, it starts off with her uh, getting fired um, after her actually having this little funny scene where she was drinking as She-Hulk and um, when her boss comes around he asked her to go back to human form and because she was drinking as She-Hulk her metabolism uh, is not the same so she just fell like literally was completely drunk already so I kind of got a kick out of that scene um, but she gets fired um, she has, you know, trouble initially looking for a job. Um, she kind of struggles going on many different interviews. Nobody wants to take a chance, even though she did the right thing by saving those people at the courthouse. Um, uh, so she's, you know, having trouble finding a job. Now in this episode, I thought they did a really good job, um, showing the humanism in the character that I, I thought they really didn't do a good job in the first episode. Um, made it a little bit more likable seeing her with her family and you know reacting to her family they had a really little cute scene where um she was kind of being overwhelmed with questions with some of the family members and her dad kind of pulls her in the garage saying that he has a question for her and kinds of you know feels that she might be getting a little bit overwhelmed so he kind of saves her you know kind of has a little private conversation in the garage which i kind of liked um you know, she cuts back and she's back at the bar. She's drinking, kind of deciding what to do. And she gets uh, approached by the guy that was in the courthouse that she was going against. Uh, and he offers her a job. And she takes the job you know, initially, like right away, without even really knowing what the job was because, you know, everyone's been in that situation. Everyone's been desperate, right? So she takes it, um, and then she gets her first day. Uh, he asks her to always be in Hulk form, whether, you know, at work or in the courts, because she's representing the superhuman division. And he approaches her with the first cage, which is going to be um, Tim Roth's character, Abomination, which we haven't seen in a long time. <clears throat> And they had this cool little scene where, you know, he's in the cage. He's in the, he isn't in abomination form anymore. He says that he's changed spiritually. <laughs> so I kind of got a kick out of that. So I don't know where they're going with this. But, uh, you know, basically he says that he's changed. She's kind of convinced because of how uh, he told her that he changed. So she, she kind of believes him. Um, they cut back to a scene where she's in the apartment. She's talking to Bruce, kind of asking for permission, even though she's really going to take it anyways. But he's okay with it, and, you know, he reveals that uh, he uh, received a letter from Abomination, kind of an apology letter, and they kind of reconciled, which I wonder what was said. I wonder if that is ever going to be revealed. But... Uh, after that and you know the whole hulk scene on the phone um she calls her boss or i think her boss calls her and he she says that she's going to take the job uh, and take the case um 
and then the boss says, you know, check the news report, and she sees uh, abomination fighting. What well, looks like the Shane Chi scene, um, when Abomination was fighting the cage with Wong. So maybe this show is taking place during when that movie took place is kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe Abomination Ray Palm promised to help Wong. Uh, something along those means. Maybe Wong helped him in some situation, but I guess we'll find out. But overall, I thought the episode was a lot more interesting because of where the stories were leading. Uh, leading. Uh, they had one scene that I missed where they had Hulk that was in the spaceship. What looks like he's going to Sakaar. So maybe he's going to, you know, pick up his son. I don't know. You know, Scar. Um, so it's going to be interesting where that storyline goes. Or if it's going to lead into a movie. Or if it's going to get resolved even at all in the show. So I wonder where that's going to go. There is this one interesting scene where Jennifer is looking for a job. And you notice on the right hand side of the computer screen. It says that man with claws gets in a fight at a bar. So, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> I guess that's our first knowledge of Wolverine in the in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, things I didn't like, um, the boss, you know, the new boss seems a little douchey, but I guess, you know, that's on purpose. Um... Doesn't really seem like a cool person to work for, but I guess who actually has cool bosses nowadays? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought the episode was fine. Um, there's it's nothing groundbreaking or like amazing or anything, but I thought it was a definitely a huge step up from last week's episode. Um, so maybe they wanted to get all the woke stuff out of the way in the first episode, and hopefully now it's a story, more story, and you know. Tone, tone down on the woke stuff is what I'm hoping. But uh, overall, I, you know, this episode, I, you know, obviously I, I think I, I enjoyed it a lot more than episode one, obviously. I thought that the, you know, the story and where they're leading to in this episode led into or is going to uh, a lot of interesting or could be interesting plots. So we'll see. I don't know that why that was so hard to articulate. But what I was trying to say is it looks like it's going somewhere interesting. When last week it didn't look like it was going to go anywhere. Like they seemed like they closed the door on so many possibilities on Jennifer. Just not wanting to be a hero. Not being likable. Thinking or thinking that she has everything down pat already. Um, when she really doesn't know what having this power really means. So I think in this episode just, you know, her you know, having trouble looking for a job, um, you know, going through that struggle and then realizing that, you know, she's not going to be able to keep this a secret from everyone and that, you know, helping people is always going to be more important than um, keeping a secret or shoes, for instance. So I, I think, uh, like I said, this episode, she was a lot more likable, which is extremely important which any with any character you're in, introducing especially a hero so i thought they did a lot more better a lot better job this uh, episode than episode one so hopefully they keep up this trend so we'll see but anyways guys that's my initial thoughts on the episode hopefully you guys enjoyed the video um and yeah hit that like and subscribe button and i'll catch you on the next one